Hey guys, I just wanted to do a video, um, I haven't done one in about a year, um, so I've been waiting for Pandora's Box 7, still no news yet, still um, in development, so um, this is my most recent purchase, the PlayStation Classic, um, just wanted to do a video on this, give you my thoughts, um, so I got this about a month or two ago, um, the Amazon Prime Day sale, it was like $15.99, so um, I wasn't planning on getting one, one of these, um, so I never had the original PS1, so there's no nostalgia there for me. Um, but th at that price, that's mainly the reason I picked it up, um, just to hack it and put um, a load of emulators and ROMs onto it. That's that's why I got it. So um, that's what I want to show you. Um, so yeah, for the, I think these were ninety pounds when they first came out um, at the start of the year or something. Um, but they failed very badly, as a lot of people know. The PS1. Um, emulation and the games they put on didn't run well so um, these you'll find really cheap quite often um, so it comes with two controllers um, one there and the other one here I got this third party box which is pretty massive actually I um, got this from Amazon um, but it does the job um, so I wasn't a big fan of these pads, I never had the original, but I find this is quite stiff, hurts my thumb after a while, but um, if you're playing emulators and stuff and if you've got it hacked, then it will support other pads as well, so I, I use my 360 pad when I'm doing that. Let me just boot it up. So, um, actually before I do that, so this is, is modded, so you can see I've got this OTG cable, uh, all these cables, ignore these, these are from various things, my room's just a mess. You just got the USB cable going into the TV and the HDMI cable going into the TV. Um, and then, yeah, all these cables are just headsets and things like that. Um, so this cable here allows me to plug a USB stick into the back. So it, you've got the power side going off to the TV and then this extra bit here for the USB. Um, so there was a mod called Bleem Sync, which you have to install to do that. Um, that's a fairly simple mod, um, you just put some files onto the USB, you then plug it into the second port. I did have some trouble when I did that initially because um, there's some limitation on the amount of power that it will put to those ports and the machine wouldn't come on when I did that, um, when I had the USB plugged into the TV, so if I plugged it into an iPhone plug and plugged it into the mains instead down there, then it powered on fine, it then runs the Bleem Sync installation, which then allows you to use the USB in the back, so you still got both your front ports which you can use for controllers. Um, so with that done, I then installed um, Auto Bleem onto the stick, which is um, the front end with Retro Arch and all of that stuff. So the power's gone off because my TV's gone into standby. Let me just turn that back on. Does work. I just got it blocked with the speaker, it's kind of in the way. Okay, there we go. So, um, I wasn't sure if I should show PS1 stuff first or go straight to the emulators. And since I got this mainly for emulation, I'm gonna go into that. So here we go, the auto bleam screen. Um, I hit square and it goes into retro arch. There we go. That's a reflection of me. Okay, so um, I'm actually gonna ditch this controller and plug my Xbox 360 one in because it's comfier. So I was messing with this this morning, thinking, what, what do I want to show? And I know what everyone's gonna want to see. It's Amstrad, so <laughs> so I've got this uh, this keyboard as well, um, and this memory stick's just full of various systems. So if I load a call, just go into Amstrad, and if I go start call, there we go. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Ah, oh, here we go. Ten. Print. I think I can be asked for this. Anyway, 
Amstrad. That if that's not worth fifteen ninety nine by itself, you know. Awesome. Ten out of ten for this console. End of review. Um, my bro will show you. Let me just go into something. Oh, hang on. I'm doing it one handed. Go to load content. There's a game that came out yesterday for the Amstrad um, called Pinball Dreams. Pretty much everyone who's into um, at least Amstrad um, is playing this now because it's really impressive that they've got this running on a, a 128k Amstrad. So I did download it. I'm um, going just go and uh, drop it in with all my other stuff. I think they do recommend specific emulators that run it best. It runs, from what I can tell, it runs well. Um, there's some graphic flickering on the loading screen, but after that it seemed to be fine. So, yeah, really good. So this is a port from the Amiga. Amazing how they've they've got everything working. All the music tunes, uh, everything. It's brilliant. Let me skip this bit. It's going to go straight into ignition. Love the tunes on this. This is with the arrow keys for the um, flippers. Look at that, one handed. <laughs> it's brilliant, they've just got the physics spot on. It's like compared to the Amiga version, really well done. Running on a CPC, well, this is the 6128 that it's emulating. So, yeah, so. With it modded, it's going to, let me just pause this, it's going to run all of the systems that RetroArch runs, all the 8-bit and 16-bit run really well. Um, so I just filled this stick full of um, various systems, let me just demonstrate something else. I'm going to do it one-handed. So I've got the Mega Drive Mini coming tomorrow, and I wasn't sure if I should even bother keeping that pre-order because um, cause this plays Mega Drive really well and I've got a full set of, of games on here as well I'm just going to, should have started from the bottom so the one I was using was this one um, you don't have to load the core first it just makes it slightly quicker when you're loading the games so it, it plays Mega Drive and Mega CD perfectly. Um, I think I've got Mega CD on here somewhere, yeah. Just pick a random game, I think. Cannon Fodder, one of my favourites. Oh, that one. So it just runs flawlessly. Um, like I said, the standard PS controllers, I'm not a big fan of the D-pad. Um, especially it doesn't feel um, like the Mega Drive one. I think that's the main reason I've kept the pre-order, is mainly for the, the controllers, um, just to give me that authentic feel. Um, so I got a bit of a discount with it as well, it's only £60, so it's like £30 a controller. Which I might even just use them on the PlayStation, I don't know. but. Yeah, I'm going to get that tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that, so I'm a big fan of the Mega Drive, had a couple of them back in the day. Um, let me go into a game. Oh, 
Sorry, I'm breaking it now. There we go. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah, that's what I wanted. So I'm doing this one-handed, so bear with me. But you can use either analog or the um, digital, but the, I find the D-pad on the 360 pads closer to the Mega Drive was than to the PlayStation. Yeah, I think I can do the first mission with one hand. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really impressed with the emulation quality. Um, I saw some videos on the Mega Drive Mini talking about audio lag and there's some videos of that where they slow it down and you can see that it, there's a delay. Um, I saw one video was showing the Castlevania menu as you're flicking between the um, things on the start menu. I might even bring it up on here because I, I didn't have that problem on this. I don't know if the audio lags better on this than the Mega Drive. I'll, I'll see when it comes. Um, and there's another one which was the Mega Man, they, on the Digital Foundry review they were showing the gunshot was, the sound was happening if several frames after it actually happened, so I loaded that up on here as well and it seemed, uh, well I didn't notice any lag on this, so potentially it's better than the Mega Drive Mini, we'll see, I don't know, maybe it's just their TVs. Um, but one of them was Castlevania Bloodlines. So you'll have to search, or maybe I'll put the link in the description, but you'll have to search if not, if I can't find it. <laughs> it's just going through the this menu here. I mean that seems pretty instant to me. You see it move, you hear the sound. Maybe if you really slow it down you'd notice. But um couldn't see any lag there and the May Drive Mini was noticeably a bit slower. But I know they're, they're doing well with the hack that's going to be out soon I think and they're talking about increasing the CPU speed and stuff like that so there's a good chance that it's going to be even better once it is hacked, we'll see. Um, but yeah, this runs all the system SNES as well, so I've got the SNES Classic, I did a video on that um, when I got it. And I was thinking, should I sell the SNES Classic? Should I cancel the Mega Drive pre-order? Because this plays everything really as well. Um, but I think it's mainly down to the the controllers, I think. Having the original Nintendo controllers on the SNES Classic, it still feels nicer to play than, than this does. So I like that this has got a full ROM set. Uh, so I, I don't use the OTG cable on my SNES. I've just got like uh, the my favourites on there. So it's good to have complete sets on here and then maybe just my favourites on the other minis, I don't know, but I want them all. I'm, like, I'm going to keep them all. I think um, this is really good, especially for like Amstrad and stuff like that. Um, how you can plug a keyboard in. Very impressive. Um, it's a great system. I think that I'm going to keep the others as well though. It's, it's good to, to have them all, I think. Um, I'm not going to bother with a PC engine though. I used to have the handheld one back in the day, the Turbo Express. Um, but I'm, I'm quite happy playing PC Engine on this one, I think, um, or on my um, GPDXD as it's handheld. It reminds me more of um, when I had the, the handheld PC Engine. Um, so I will show the PS1 stuff as well. Um, I only got a 64 gig stick, which is full, so I've got another 64 gig stick for um, the PlayStation stuff. So I'm just going to switch this off. I think I've done that wrong there. I have to. Oh yeah, okay, it's trying to set my controller up. Let me just hit the power before it does that. Okay, I'm just gonna swap the cables over, put the PlayStation controller back in. So, hang on a second. I'm gonna swap this USB. I'm just gonna put this down here. You could just have a black screen. It's not like I'm a professional YouTuber, so I don't mind. There we go, I've swapped it. This one says PS on, because it's an official PlayStation product and not. Put the controller in. Okay, so um, like I say, I never had the original PS One. 
not sure what I was playing at the time, maybe PC, probably a 486 or something like that. Um, but I was, I was never impressed with the 3D graphics, the polygons just looked quite horrible to me, even back then. Um, so I think my first kind of console similar to this would have been the Dreamcast, which obviously blew it out of the water. So um, if I press start and it will go in to auto bleam. And you can, it, it will show the stock games as well as the ones that you've added on the USB on here. Um, but you've got them all in a nice carousel with box art, which is really good. Um, so I've played a bunch of these a little bit. I'm gonna to struggle to do it with the phone in one hand, but you've got a few different options as well. If you go down and then go into the game, you've got a couple of things like high res. Speed hack, I think, is for PAL games, gets them to run 60 hertz, I think. And high res is, um, not sure what resolution it is, but it does make them look crisper, the graphics. So I've got them on for this game, which is a really good game, actually. Reminded me of Screamer, which I used to play on the PC. Um, so I'll, I'll just fire one up. I have to do something about that reflection. I don't, don't like appearing in the TV all the time. But it runs these games really well. Um, the ones that it came with, there are a lot of them were PAL and had performance issues, I think. But the ones I've played, I've not had too much trouble with. A couple of problems I'll mention in a sec. Let me just go into a quick race. This is with the high res mode. I think if you hold select and triangle as well, then you've got a, another filter here which can kind of change the. You won't see it on this phone, I don't think, but it changes the graphics filter slightly. So you've got loads of options you can play with. This is a lot like this Racer, really. It controls accelerate. Don't even know. Okay, there we go. Doing this one-handed on my knee, so it's not going to be very impressive. <laughs> it's a really good game, though. Very impressed. Okay, I'm gonna pause it. Yeah, so that runs really well, and a lot of the stuff that I've played does as well. Let me just go back. If I press select and triangle, and then exit, I think that's a, a quick way. Um, I think the open button also works as a reset button. And you've got your save states as well. I'm not gonna go into it in too much detail because there's loads of videos about this anyway, so I think everyone already knows how to operate it. Um, I did have some problems with a couple of games with the CD audio. Um, so if, if anyone can help me on that, I'd really appreciate that because um, Return Fire was one of my favourites, which I, what system did I play that on? It was on PC actually, um, and I had it on Saturn as well, um, which was more recently. I didn't have a Saturn in, in the day, that was something I picked up in later years. But anyway, I couldn't get the music working on this. Um, I tried different formats, the PVP, because you can download like PSP um, images as well as um, the bin queue format um, but so far I haven't found one that's got music working um, I think I did have that problem with one of the Contra games as well um, but I did just download another and it was okay but if anyone can give me any tips on on that that would be great um, but apart from that yeah it's really good system got loads of games which I've never heard of before. Um, my friend who used to have a, have a PS1 recommended some like this one. I think it was similar to Doom. It's a good game. Um, Die Hard had on PC. Very good. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with it. Um, bargain for the price. If you see them cheap, I definitely recommend it. Um, I did want to show more Amstrad stuff, but I've already unplugged my keyboard now. So unfortunately, um, but Bruce Lee, brilliant game. 
just get it for Bruce Lee on the Amstrad and you'll be happy. Um, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I might do one on the Mega Drive. We'll see. Oh yeah, um, one other thing. I tried Maimon here as well because I've got, as you might have seen my other video, I've got the Pandora's box over here. So I thought that'd be quite nice um, if I could use Main and connect this controller, but I couldn't get it to pick up this up. I might have another go actually because um, it might just be that I, I don't know Retro Watch too well. So I might give it another try because that does work on the PS3. Um, and I think PS3 controllers work on this, so theoretically maybe. So that'd be quite good. The Pandora's box has problems with V-Sync, doesn't have V-Sync, so a lot of screen tearing. Um, whereas you can configure this a bit more. I might give it another go, but so far I haven't got that to work. But the 360 pad worked, um, PS3 um, third party pad worked. So um, yeah, it's really good, very good. And cheaper than a Pi as well. Um, so there you go, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.